My name is Ann Yu, and uh, I play in a band called Silver Swans. Um, I am the vocalist, and I help produce the tracks. Um, and I also play some of the guitar parts in some of the songs um, that are guitar-oriented. So um, Silver Swans is me and myself and John Waters. Um, John is the mastermind of the band. He um, he basically produces the tracks, um, and I kind of I consider him like my magician of sorts because um, if I send him even just a vocal melody or um, like a guitar line with a vocal melody and kind of give him the the vibe or the theme I'm going for, he produces the track around um, the idea that I've sent him. So he's like. He's pretty much the brains of the project. And it's just the two of us. Um, so we have uh, one EP and two full lengths. We also, um, before, before we were technically like Silver Swans, um, we released an album put out by a friend of ours, um, which had uh, basically a collection of songs that were sort of sitting on our laptops. Um, but I don't consider that phase of the band like truly Silver Swans because it wasn't really, um, we didn't do it with any kind of intention of our sound or like who we wanted to, you know, like embody as a band. So um, I really consider the last two full lengths and then the EP before that like our body of work. Hmm, that's like, that's like picking a favorite among all your children. <laughs> um, I would say, uh, I would have to say maybe Forever is my favorite because um, that one, we had very little like, inhibitions with the style we were going for we kind of just wrote what was coming just straight from our gut um with the last album we intentionally themed the entire album um and so i think it's just a different delivery versus when you're writing sort of um without any kind of filter of what kind of theme you want or what kind of story you're trying to tell it makes it a lot uh, more vulnerable singing or vulnerable for me to sort of come from that place of like honesty so I would have to say forever um so we are truly a uh, like a bedroom project um John has his own recording setup in his apartment and um I pretty much write all the songs in my bedroom um and then we get together at his place and we finish the tracks out together, but we've never hired anyone to do the sound engineering or the mixing or the, um, or like the producing. It's all just been in his home basically. So at that, like on that level, it's very, it's a very intimate process. We worked with a label for uh, Forever and for the EP, Secrets, um, and then we independently released the last album, Touch. So the, the, the pros of working with a label um, is that you have another team member um, and someone that's not part of the creative process so it's great to have like that objective third party um telling giving you sort of their opinion about you know like what what song should be the single you know what song we should make a music video for how the you know um album cycle should run um and on that note it's also sort of a con because you know as much as i want to think that um i can keep my 
business hat and my like, you know, artists like this, these are the songs that speak to me hat on. Um, it's, it's, it's really hard to have somebody else come in and sort of dictate all that too. Um, and also, you know, you just never know what, um, you know, like it's one opinion versus another. So you just never know, like, you know, when everything is going great, um, it's awesome. But when, you know, maybe a single doesn't do as well as it, it should have, or like, you know, music video didn't turn out the way it should, then it's easy to like point the finger when you have a bunch of people working with you. Um, so it's been sort of like, I feel like it's, a it's sort of like a feast or famine when it comes to working with labels. Like when everything is going great, then naturally everything, including working with a label is going great. When you don't have that, you know, the, the ideal album release and the ideal number of sales and the ideal amount of press and you're not like the big buzz band and the it band for the year, then it's like, you know, you wonder to yourself, oh, should we have done this on our own? Should we have um, worked with somebody else? You know, so it's like there's a lot of pros and cons and you kind of just have to go with your gut. Um, and ultimately what I've learned is that if you're happy with what you've produced, um, there's really no, you know, right or wrong. You just sort of, you sort of go with like, you know, what your first gut instinct is as, as far as like whether you want to put it on a label or you want to release it yourself. I don't mind. I think, I mean, for me personally, um, you know, if you're if you're a small if you're a small like beginning baby band and you're approached by a label, I think it's a little bit too soon. Um, when you don't need a label, is sort of when you really need the label. Um, like when you can actually, you know, that's why it kind of comes back to like your, you know, when you have the options, it's really, it's really sort of a, you know, like the freedom of having the option, the freedom of having a really strong album release and uh, the freedom of being a band that has a following and that, um, you know, is doing well on all the different social media outlets and is doing well on, on internet sales um, is also the time when you should consider getting a label because the label can actually propel you to the next level. I think oftentimes baby bands think, you know, the label is going to take you to these places or, you know, like it's going to take you from obscurity into like this place of, you know, um, fame and, you know, everyone's going to love you, but it's rarely the case, at least from my experience. I feel like you kind of have to do all of that on your own and, um, kind of build your foundation with strength on your own. And then I think the label comes in and can really take you to another, like the next level of, um, you know, like basically stability as a project. So um, I would say, you know, like the songwriting, the practicing and the recording is pretty much like 90% of my time. Um, and, you know, like if we're looking at hours, it's probably 10% of my time is spent on other things like the social media aspect and sending out emails. Um, it used to be even less when we were working with a label because a label kind of functioned as our manager and also functioned as our PR agent. So, um, you know, it kind of freed us up to basically spend a lot of time just focusing on songwriting and on recording and um, putting our album out from that angle. But um, now I spend a little bit more time being the one answering the emails and, um, you know, managing like the, the business aspect of it and like, you know, our monthly like internet sales and um, making sure that, you know, we, you know, we're, trying to figure out like where the song, which songs are selling the most, all that kind of stuff. I didn't have to think about that stuff before. And now it's sort of, it's still like a learning curve for me. So, um, you know, I would say like 10% outside of the actual music making songwriting, um, is I spend on like business related stuff. So we actually, we're, our project doesn't, doesn't tour um I would consider it more of like a recording project um and I I think 
sort of with like the label aspect of it, I, I do feel like there's going to be a point where, you know, you'll know when you have to go on the, like the month long tours, the six month long tours. And at this point, we just can't financially justify being on the road because we're not turning enough income, you know, basically to, to quit our day jobs and, you know, basically risk, you know, everything to be playing shows to, you know, who knows how many people would, would, you know, come to these, these gigs. But yeah, at this point, like we're not really touring that much. Uh, so we use, uh, Facebook, Tumblr, um, uh, Reverb Nation, um, Twitter, um, we also, I don't know if SoundCloud is considered a social media site because it's like a listening tool, but uh, we do get a lot of emails on, on SoundCloud, so that's that's also an avenue that we use. Um, and uh, what else do we use? There's like so many. It's just um, sometimes it's really hard to keep, <laughs> keep up because, you know, it, it can seriously be like, you spend like an hour just going through everything and like responding to, you know, like comments or, you know, trying to be engaged, you know, like engaging as an artist is kind of a time consuming thing. But yeah, the, those are the, those are the main ones. Uh, I would say, you know, like, I'm not technically sure if this counts, but I would say SoundCloud because um, we actually have the most followers, I think, I think we have like 35,000 people on there listening and, um, you know, we get a lot of emails and comments. I don't know exactly the science behind why SoundCloud has been so popular for us, but, um, that's sort of the one that, um, we spend the most time on responding to. It used to be Facebook, but, um, it's sort of, you know, it's sort of like petering out like the Facebook sort of activity and the engagement. So I would say SoundCloud. So one of the things that has worked really well for us, just from a marketing angle, um, we've done several covers. Um, and um, it's kind of an awesome way, a very, very effective way to reach an audience that normally wouldn't have heard of your band. And also, um, we keep to the integrity of our sound. Um, and so we pick songs that would make sense lyrically and just sort of just the vibe wise that would fit, um, with us and also things that speak to us on any, you know, a certain kind of level songs that speak to us that have, that potentially could have the right vibe and then lyrically make sense with Silver Swans. And, um, it's sort of a communication medium for us to reach new fans. And it's been amazing just sort of, you know, the crossover from people that never would have heard of us. Like, you know, we did a Miley Cyrus cover and we've done, um, we've done like a Lana Del Rey cover and, um, we did like a, um, we did like a Smith cover. So it's, it's been really fun and also a really cool way to like market to new audiences yeah the covers have been um not only really fun but a cool a cool way to just reach new people also we um we we spent some time doing remixes for other bands and um vice versa and that's also been a been a way to sort of reach like you know cross sections of of music listeners that we, we typically wouldn't have been able to reach just to the, you know, and also, also because we don't, you know, we're, we're not, we're not backed by like a label with a budget or anything like that. So it's really hard. We have to figure out ways that we can do this on our own. And I find like doing the remixes and putting out, um, cover songs has been sort of our most effective way to, to reach new audiences. Um, it's, it was actually really awesome. It's sort of what helped, um, kind of propel our career initially. Um, 
because he reached out to a bunch of different blogs and um, basically created this sort of like mini buzz for us that kind of kept like snowballing. Um, and, you know, I really like me personally um, and John, and I, you know, John or myself, we, we wouldn't have had any way to know who to contact. And, you know, working with a publicist means like they know the right um, editor, the right, you know, writer to contact who might be into our style, you know, like what blogs to contact, who he has working relationships with, which we had none of. So that part of it was amazing. Um, and, you know, like I said before, it's amazing when it's the right song and you have all the right momentum and everything is going in the right direction. It's only like when there's a song that's not doing well, it, it's like it loses steam for everyone. And like for us, we were, we were really lucky because, you know, our publicist was also a label. So it allowed us sort of to have like, we didn't have to I know publicists can be really expensive and pricey on a, you know, like for, for an album cycle and we didn't have to, we didn't have that cost. And so it helps us sort of grow organically, um, and still be able to keep, you know, like working on new songs, you know, and using, using the cost of what would have been, you know, gone toward the publicist to, to basically, you know, create more music and focus more on like our songwriting. So that was really awesome. So I would recommend a publicist, for sure. The worst thing about being in a band is that um, you are creating art, basically like a working, breathing piece of art with, you know, one other person, two other people, three other people. And at this stage, um, you're not getting, you know, when you're actually creating the art, you're not getting paid for it and no one else is. So you know, you have like people's creative egos involved. And, you know, even if you, even if you basically are very transparent about what everyone's role is, like, you know, I'm the songwriter and you help me produce a track or you're the songwriter and I'm the one that fleshes it out. Um, things always get lost in translation. So I've noticed like with the projects I've been involved in, you rarely meet someone that's basically your twin, you know, like you can't clone yourself and it's like, Everyone wants to, you know, whether you're the principal songwriter or you're the guitar player or, you know, you're the, um, you're the, you're the drummer or the, you know, beat maker. It's like everyone wants a piece of their, like, creative soul and their energy in the track. And in order for that to happen, it's like everyone's voice has to be heard. And it's like I've often found that, like, that democracy can be, like, brutally difficult and, um, it's, it's like when you have that flow, it's amazing, but oftentimes it's like, it is like the worst part about being in a band and it's like really exhausting when people aren't jiving and like trying to, like people aren't really seeing eye to eye on, on like the creative direction of the band. It just basically means you have a lot of unfinished material and that can be um, really frustrating. We, um, so yeah, we, Silver Swans, um, just finished a music video, um, a couple weeks ago. So, um, we'll be releasing that in the next month. And then, uh, we're working on an EP at the moment that we will be releasing, um, towards the end of this year. Um, and I think, you know, I think it's a, it's a little bit of a different direction, but you know, it's, uh, I'm really excited about sort of this fresh perspective we have with the current material working on. So that's sort of coming in the horizon.